Hi everyone! So in this video we are continuing our trip east from Glacier National Park towards the Canadian Rockies. Our next tentative destinations are in Alberta, the Kananaskis region, and one or both of the national parks, Banff and Jasper. We hope you enjoy the journey with us. Beer we bought in um, Tamar. I'm out for an early morning paddle. Rolled in here probably about five o'clock, I think. And it was just starting to clear. We walked down to the lake, just beautiful. This is a huge park and it's absolutely gorgeous from what we can see, even just with the glimpses when we drove in yesterday, it was so nice. And looking at this particular campsite, and there's several different campsites here. It's big and it's beautiful. This bike path is part of the Trans-Canada Trail and goes to Mount Sorel campground where we first walked down to the lake last night we cut through basically just one of the old campsites that's no longer open and it made a nice easy access to the field that we went to but today I thought I'd try this bike trail beautiful little area yo bear that's making sure we chatted to the park operator yesterday he said just make sure you're carrying bear spray and I also have the air horn, so no different than when we were at Glacier. All right, I know the lake's just over there. I just don't know when this trail gets close to it. I changed my mind and doubled back to the route I knew, and this is not an unpleasant way to get down to the lake. <laughs> Look at these mountain views. Same ones you would have seen yesterday, and then that was about five or six o'clock. gets cold here. One thing about this park, the elevation, the campgrounds that are about 1,700 meters, you know, when we were at Glacier, we were at about 1,225 meters. 1,700. Significantly different. So nice. So nice. Steve and Darlene, two of our road trekker friends. If you haven't gotten here, you need to put this on your list. Bring Transporter, that's the name of their road trek, and a couple of kayaks. I think you'll be happy. This is only one of the many lakes here. You can see some of the trailers or campers at the Interlake Campground. So at least on this side, they're quite close to the water. Our campground's over there, but it's about a kilometer walk to get to the water. Beautiful though. 
So nice. <laughs> Probably can't hear me say that a lot. I don't think we're going to be here long enough to get a lot of hiking in it. But similar to Yoho and Glacier, we go someplace, we spend a few days, we get a good idea what it's like, and then we go back and spend several days, which is likely what we're going to do here. A couple people out, someone there in a kayak, someone else in a canoe just in the misty corner, and obviously some ravens around as well. Time to get back. Didn't paddle that far, but I just enjoyed floating on the lake this morning. It's very nice. The trail I want to get out on is just slightly to my left through the grass. Standing in the trees, I don't think it's a great idea to go out in the open field. <laughs> so just right on the edge of the trees, overlooking the lake and some bear scat down there. So we didn't get to do as much here. That's one of the challenges. We arrive one day and store most of the way and then basically set up, get up this morning. I managed to get a paddle in and Mickey and I did just a short hike because we knew the afternoon was supposed to not be so great. It was actually better than we thought. Also stopped at the store this afternoon, picked up a Kananaskis map, which just shows all the wonderful places. This is definitely a place you want to come back to and maybe spend, say, five days. We're going to head over to the uh, visitor info center that we stopped at to get our Kananaskis pass, which, by the way, you are required to have if you're in the Kananaskis region. And, um, it's a conservation can, pass. Yeah, and it's, what is it, $14 Fif a day? $15 a yeah. day or $90 if you want a annual. annual pass. Yeah, and uh, so we're going to go over there. Uh, there's a Santa dump there, so we're going to dump our tanks and head up north a bit. Uh, check the weather too because they have internet there. stop to do some laundry in Camor. Finch is checking things out the window. He was just on the dash a few minutes ago. We're just down about a half a block from the Grizzly Paw Brewing Company, so I think that's where we'll probably grab some lunch. Of 
so now we're heading over towards Jasper and we're going to check out the Wilcox campground. Apparently there's a nice hike to an alpine meadow, so we'll check that out. The weather's supposed to be nice tomorrow, so yeah, we might be able to do a hike. Um, otherwise, we'll just see what happens. and air horn. Look at that view. And this is just from our campground. Quite high up though. We're just almost 2100 meters. Got down to about 8 last night. So warmer than I thought actually. Oh my god, you guys, this is so awesome, amazing, look at this, that's the Columbia Ice Field over there, Athabasca Glacier I think that is, spectacular, and in fact it's sort of a big bang for your buck because it's not a very long trail, it's about four kilometers I think, yeah maybe 400 and something meters and there's the bad view and I didn't even look that way <laughs> holy cow wow judging from the number of cars at the parking lot it's a very popular hike so you may want to get out here early unless you're camping here like us drank it all in beautiful meadow glaciers jagged peaks what more could you ask for Cold beer. This might be my new favorite hike. trail pass where I think most people stop. You can actually continue on quite a ways down the valley on an extension of the trail and we're just going to head up to that little bump ahead of us. See if the view is any, any better, <laughs> which is hard to imagine. It's a trail all the way up. Only a moderate grade and to get up in the meadow it's relatively flat. Very nice. We're actually uh, just short of the top of Wilcox Ridge just a little bit after the pass. We wanted to get somewhere where we're out of the wind and uh, away from the people because there are a few people here. So we're at the Wilcox Campground in Jasper. The campsites are really nice. There's quite a few spots for small rigs. I think it's no bigger than 25 feet, but I've, I've seen a few folks with a little bit bigger than that. The sites are all you just sort of pull off on the side to be able to camp, which is great. So we got here yesterday and kind of settled in and then kind of, I don't know, I think we were just getting ready to come out for a hike up yeah. here and then everything kind of went to hell um, <laughs> we're sitting there Mickey's getting ready in the van we've got Finch with us and we've got the netting closed but that's not very good so we've got a cat gate that we've sort of improvised and put in and it's worked quite well and the next thing you know Finch just bounds out he sees a gap jumps out and tears off into the bush 
and you know we went running after him and um, we want to also thank our, our our neighbors just up the road in a van uh, Mike and Deb because they came out and their dog Tom they came out right away to help us try and oh, find they were him amazing they spent oh. hours looking yeah and we actually found him in about five minutes under a log but when he saw us he just just took off and we couldn't believe how fast he can run yeah. and he took off into one of the corners of the bush and was gone and so we were just terrified so we were out looking we couldn't find him he wouldn't come back um, we were letting everyone know in the campground in case they saw him uh, thanks also to the park rangers here they uh, we told them about him and they actually spent some time looking for him as well so we were just terrified we didn't know if we'd ever see him again and we spent literally over three hours crawling through everywhere. I was, I went up and down through the forests, uh, looking in trees, through heavy duty bush. Calling uh, him. Mickey was going all through the campgrounds everywhere. And you know, we were, we were just terrified. Just it, about ready to give up. And you know, we thought we'd probably end up having to spend several days here. We weren't gonna leave unless we were certain we couldn't find him. And then while Mickey was out actually searching the campground again, I was near our van and I was just sitting there calling his name quietly and I was sort of forlorn and, and I walked up to the bush where we'd know he disappeared and I was just looking in and calling his name and I looked down to my left and there he is sitting in the grass kind of you know semi hidden but he's just looking at me and meows a couple of times and so I went to pick him up and he ran away and he went maybe five feet away and they just started meowing at me and so I literally crawled on hands and knees um, got close to him and he let me pick him up and I brought him back to the van and uh, he seems fine he seems no worse for wear he I don't know where he was the whole time we went through that particular area oh, so many times, so many times. Of times but if he was if he was hiding and lying under something it's so hard to see him yeah. anyway so when when I actually um, Gordon couldn't figure out where I was but by, when I came back round um, he had a beer in his hand and I thought, oh, he's pretty relaxed. Me, me not Finch. <laughs> and, then, and then he told me that he found him and I couldn't, I just could not believe it. And um, I just came down and I just burst into tears because <laughs> I was holding wow. back up it until was... that point. What? You got him? No, oh, really? Oh my god! Oh, thank god! He came back to the van? Oh my god! Where? This is so, so so difficult for us, and yeah. even even this morning, um, I was up and petting Finch, and I actually broke down. I was yeah. just so so happy. <laughs> so much stress. He, oh he my was gosh. back with us. So, so um, we're hoping. Cautionary tale. Yes, and we're and have I know to secure that door really. And well. I think the other thing, uh, we you can get a GPS tag for him, and then and then just a bit of software on your phone, and even if you're naughty. And, yeah, it was Mike actually that did yes, it. And, and he he was they were so good because they had a cat too that sort of ran off from their house. And so um, he said to Gordon that he's probably not going to go far. And, you know, in my mind, I'm, you know, I'm thinking the worst and I'm thinking he's probably up in the mountains already. Yeah, heading for the glacier. Gone. Yeah. But he was, he was probably within 90 feet of our van just sitting there. And yes. we'll get a GPS chip and then you can apparently even, if, as long as you've downloaded the map where you're at, um, even if you don't have cell reception, you can track him. So that would let us know if he was 30 or 60 feet away. And we only take him out when he's on leash. He's always so cautious. Um, we did it yesterday and he saw some people and he immediately ran back into the van. So 
a good so, lesson for he's us. He's so jumpy and nervous that, yeah. you know, even if we found him, it's really hard to approach him without scaring him and him taking off. And he actually even at one point uh, crawled up a tree about five feet. Yeah, and then ran back, then down. Ran back down. Yeah. So. Anyway, so we had a, an incredibly stressful day yesterday. Yeah. Uh, really didn't do much after he came back other than batting down the van. And, you know, we, we, uh, we did actually uh, spend a bit of time with our neighbors, uh, yeah. Mike and Deb, who've been traveling. They have a, a nice pleasure way uh, on, on tour. tour. Yeah. <laughs> and they got it maybe about a year ago, just under, and they've already, cr earlier this year, they crossed Canada and back. I think it was 68 days. So they're really, uh, they're really enjoying their van. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice vehicle. So we're just so grateful that we found him. I, I can't believe that we did. I really honestly almost gave up and thank goodness yeah. we found him and Gordon was able to get him. So we're going to enjoy the rest of this hike, uh, turn around fairly quickly and uh, it took us, I don't know, not even an hour and a half to get up here. Just We'd really recommend this hike if you're in this area and oh, if you want, amazing. yeah, if you want, the trail continues on out down the valley. Uh, you could probably add another couple hours I suspect if you wanted to. Yeah. Or you can go up to the ridge it's another probably a oh, kilometer. Yeah, yeah we'd be there 15 minutes maybe. Yeah um, but this is our turnaround point yep, today. That's based on our <laughs> time and wanting to get back and yeah. just check on Finch again. So. Okay. Oh, good day. Easy hike, huge views, not even from our campsite. our campsite at Wilcox Campground in Jasper National Park and heading back down south on Highway 93 on the Icefields Parkway. Beautiful morning, the weather's just perfect and uh, we're going to try to head back towards home relatively quickly. Two days. Within two days. Uh, so we have a very long driving day ahead. I think after what happened a couple days ago with Finch, we sort of said, you know what, maybe it's time to get home. And uh, we wanted to avoid the long weekend crowds, which is coming up in uh, uh, the first week of September. So enjoy the ride with us. My goodness, the scenery is just amazing. Finch likes to get up to the front of the cab when we've stopped. <laughs> What's going on, Finch? Isn't it beautiful out there? Isn't it? This is what we missed behind Waterfall Lakes. The beautiful mountains behind there. We couldn't see it when we were here. Absolutely spectacular. Creek rest stop again on the Coquihalla Highway, just getting our lunch on our way home. World famous samosas, <laughs> veggie samosas. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we really enjoyed our stay at Peter Lougheed Provincial Park in Alberta in the Kadanaskis country. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just, uh, you know, I, I don't think a lot, maybe a lot of Albertans are aware of it, but a lot of other people aren't. Just a, just a beautiful park and there's a lot to explore there. Yeah, and we also had the, the greatest highs and the 
the worst lows at our stay at Wilcox Campground in Jasper National Park. Yes, with the with the highs being the hiking and some of the views, and the lows just being when Vinch decided yeah. to escape for a few hours. And we're still traumatized from that, I think. <laughs> Anyway, all's well that ends well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.